Good evening and welcome to the Manila Times TV's newest show, Congress Diary. Good evening and welcome to the Manila Times TV's Congress Diaries. This is where we analyze, scrutinize, and explore the pros and cons of some of the more interesting and controversial bills in our Congress today. I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin. Last year, the House of Representatives had filed or had approved the Corporate Income Tax and Incentives Rationalization Act or the CITIRA Bill. What does this mean to us ordinary citizens who wants to engage in a business enterprise or transaction? And uh, for that, we will ask our guest for tonight. And uh, we, we are very privileged to have with us Secretary Ramon Lopez of the Department of Trade and Industry or the DTI. So welcome to Congress Diary, Secretary Lopez. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Kim. And uh, good evening to everyone. Yes. Uh, yeah, we've been really waiting for you, Secretary Mon, because um, this one uh, is also one of the much awaited uh, bills yeah. that uh, we're looking at right now. What is the status of uh, this bill? Uh, I know that uh, in Congress it's been approved. Yes, it has been approved and uh, several hearings have been uh, conducted at the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called in by uh, Senator Pia Cayetano. So she's uh, the primary author. Who's also the, the chair of the Ways and Means. Uh, I see. Committee. <clears throat> yes. And uh, uh, from what uh, we know, uh, they are now integrating all the inputs coming from the various uh, stakeholders and those who attended the hearings I and see. getting inputs. And uh, I think that will be the source of uh, uh, the basis of their new bill uh, mm -hmm. that, that will be filed also by. Uh, Chairman, Senator uh, Pia, Cayetano. Pia Cayetano. Okay, so, uh, but before that, we digress a little bit, yes. uh, Secretary. So, uh, let's define what is uh, the CITIRA bill right now. So, we know it's corporate income taxes. Yes, yes. Yeah, and then we know that uh, we want to rationalize the incentives. Yeah, yeah. So, tell us all about it. Tell us the salient points and uh, why you feel that this should be pushed. Well, this is really a, a landmark uh, bill and hopefully a law mm -hmm. in the in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important to the business sector. Well, mm -hmm. for one, uh, the major reform is reducing the corporate income tax rate Correct. from 30% to 20%. That mm -hmm. would mean a lot to many companies in the Philippines, especially the SMEs, no? right. the sector that we're trying to promote. Because mm -hmm. if you really look into the way we, uh, you know, the policy environment here, mm -hmm. the incentives are given uh, to just a couple of thousand companies. Yes. Uh, and not really to the, uh, about a million. Right now, it's 1.5 million. It's not as uh, inclusive as we want to. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, well, of course, nevertheless, uh, we see the incentives also as a policy tool mm -hmm. that can attract investments into the country and and all countries uh, are, are providing those uh, tax incentives. So mm -hmm. the tax incentives regime has been in place in the country for many decades, I think since the 70s. Right. Uh, so it's also an important policy tool. But what we're trying to reform really is that, of course, on one hand, the overall tax rate from 30% to 20%. Okay. But on the other hand, it must be the other side, which is the uh, tax incentive which is, of course, a, a, a revenue leakage, so quote-unquote, yes. uh, is something that must be controlled. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that is where the, the rationalization comes into play, so that we can fund the reduction of tax revenue here, the tax rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other hand, it, uh, we will, may have to manage also the giving away the of inc incentives. The incentives, And yes. uh, just to correct the common perception, uh, misperception uh, right now, that... Uh, that the incentives will be taken away. No, uh, right. definitely Sitira. I was going to ask you that, Sitira Secretary. Sitira is something yes. that will keep the incentives and will even enhance the incentives, uh, adding several provisions, especially for new projects. Mm -hmm. What is being rationalized are incentives that refer to the existing ones. Mm -hmm. Because the existing ones, uh, in particular, not so much for BOI and other, and other uh, investment promotion agencies. The BOI has a time-bound set of incentives, performance-based mm -hmm. and time-bound. Mm -hmm. The overall policy right now is 
uh, performance based, time bound, transparent, and uh, focused. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, BOY incent set of incentives fall into that uh, right. category, so okay. no problem. So which were which it's one? It's the PESA is... incentives. Right. Okay. It's the eco zone. Ah, the eco zone because yes. after the income tax holiday, it the the, the company goes into the five percent gross income earned mm -hmm. of gross income earned as the tax rate and that is supposed to be that is perpetual that is the one right. being implemented right, right so that's now. the one that you want to correct and the perpetual nature is the one that will be made time bound mm -hmm. okay so and and so that that's one part that will have to be corrected now uh so that uh, to soften the, the landing uh and the transition mm -hmm. the what's uh, the, the current discussion right now is uh of course, the DOF, the original bill, the, the bill that was passed uh, by Congress, in, yeah, in Congress, is one yeah. that contains two years to five years range of transition, right. uh, which many uh, companies, uh, stakeholders, Feel find it, very short. It's not enough. Oh, it's not enough. And, uh, and therefore, from the DTI perspective, we are in agreement with the reform, number one. Number two, we just have to soften that. So we actually propose a much longer transition period which is which is uh, our our suggestion is from five to ten years okay uh, five meaning for those uh old uh firms uh mm -hmm. firms enjoying this for many more for yes, many years for many years and, already, and ten years yes. for the newly uh registered firms no? right, in, in right. Okay. um but the of course current uh discussions somehow point towards a some kind of a a compromise like instead of five to ten, to ten, there can just be one period transition like seven years. That's right, a, that so is it's the a one fixed. Uh, that is the one that's being uh, contemplated right now. I see. And, uh, but Secretary, yeah. um, in Congress, I remember that uh, although it passed already and uh, you yes. passed that hurdle already, right? Mm -hmm. But some of the main concerns, uh, especially raised by some on the floor, was that this is an anti-poor measure. So um, why do you think they're looking at it that way? Because uh, especially um, Congressman Edsel Lagman had uh, pointed it out at one point, no? and uh, we read it in the papers. I don't know why that, uh, he, that is his mindset. Um, does he think that uh, this one will actually be um, not good uh, in general? For, yeah, um, why, uh, why, frankly, I have no idea as to the basis of that statement. Yes. Unless the Congressman uh, might be referring to possible job loss. Right. Uh, if if companies now enjoying the perpetual incentive may decide just to leave the country, uh, that, then that, that's a potential. That's a potential job loss, and of course that can be mm -hmm. considered anti-poor. So, so but what, and and that's the reason why Kong uh, came that we mm -hmm. are suggesting a, a much a longer transition. Correct. Uh, so to, to, just so fi to find a win-win yes. uh, right uh, transition period. Yeah. Correct. Right, right. And um, second. Um, at first, I think mm. obviously PESA was against it, right? Correct. But uh, we were I know. Able to manage it. Yes. Uh, how were you able to do that? But uh, um, I talked to the director general. Of yes. Course, uh, and, uh, DG to, Plaza. Uh, DG yes. Plaza face to face and said that this is really a a government adopted reform, that okay. a tax reform that we will have to to to, to implement, and that mm -hmm. is with the mandate of the president and the cab. We discuss this at the cabinet, so that the reform must take place, but. What we just have to manage, I told the Director General, is mm -hmm. to find that win-win solution. Right. Uh, just to address, to be able to address the uh, the concerns of the stakeholders, especially those to be affected by a a capping uh, of the number of years of uh, incentives. Right. That's right. Now, um, the, the, there is a way also to manage the transition. We mm -hmm. can pro possibly give a you know to the regular enterprises. Mm -hmm. The, maybe the uh, the regular the uh, proposed uh, transition period, which is two to five years, but we must uh, recognize that there are top performing in, uh, investors. In other words, they are sure. really hundred percent or ninety percent and up uh, export oriented. They mm -hmm. uh, they employ a lot of uh, Filipinos, maybe yes. over ten thousand or mm -hmm. over five thousand, yes. whatever the hurdle. Uh, so so if you are in this category, I think it, it deserves to be given a longer transition because, mm -hmm. you know, they're really contributing much to Absolutely. the economy. Right. And then, therefore, the longer transition, the proposed five to ten years or seven years mm -hmm. can be given probably to this uh, group right. of so there uh, performing will be, sectors. So there will, there will be a review of and, uh, for all these companies correct, correct, that are in there. Correct, Kong. Uh, uh, and that's, uh, that, 
that would be uh, the, the possible scenario that mm -hmm. is our proposal to the Senate discussion right. uh, as they craft the, the new bill. Okay, um, they, they were saying before that one of the reasons why um, we are looking at this is because the corporate income tax rate is one of the highest correct, correct. Uh, currently in, in Asia, yes, right? Yes, yes. So, um, if and when uh, we already pass uh, this uh, CITIRA, uh, do you think that it will make us more competitive? Oh, yes, definitely. It will... Uh, definitely give more attraction for con investors to consider Philippines right. uh, as their in, you know, des investment destination. Right, but um, so this will run counter to some of the fears that they were saying that we might actually lose um, direct foreign investment no, because um, mm -hmm. they were saying that uh, because if you remove the incentives, uh, then uh, you know they will look at other yes. um, countries. Yeah, that, that is true if the statement is true. But again, we say that we are not removing incentives. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are just discussing now the transition period for the existing ones. Mm -hmm. uh, that definitely, uh, if they hear of more provisions of incentives, in mm -hmm. fact, incentives will even be enhanced. And I'm talking of incentives for new, newly registered firms. And that is where uh, there will still be income tax holiday. And after, first on the income tax holiday, under the proposed bill, mm -hmm. uh, we are enhancing the number of years income tax holiday will be given. In other yes. words, uh, there will be the base rate, maybe three years, four years income tax holiday. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you are located outside uh, Metro Manila and Regions 3 and 4, which are the more developed areas, yes. you can be given plus two more years. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. So, and then if yeah. you are a high-tech you know, innovative company, right. you can also be given another two years. I see. So, so tech it, firms uh, tech, will have a so, little bit more. In fact, we are giving more number of years of IPH. I see. I see. And then after that, they they graduate into a another lower income tax rate, a right. lower corporate income tax rate, mm -hmm. which is better than the 20% that is done on that the is, other side, no? the ah, 30 to 20. Wow, okay. So the lower income tax rate is like our 5% GIE now. Mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, the lower income tax rate basically would would uh, would be added after the ITH, but for a limited period. But that's mm -hmm. fine because that's the other thing. Uh, the reason why we're cutting the perpetual nature in other countries, it's only the Philippines giving. That, the that's perpetual right. Nature. So, um, so we need to correct we that. Need to correct Actually, that. you mm -hmm. also mentioned earlier, um, Secretary, that um, what you're looking at more for this bill. Uh, is uh, also for the benefit of the small and medium enterprises, right? Mm, yes. So uh, I want you to tell me about uh, how exactly do you think they'll be benefited. But before you answer that, Secretary Lopez, Congress Diaries will be on a break. Stay with us. Good evening and welcome back to Congress Diaries. Our guest for tonight is still the DTI Secretary, Ramon Mon Lopez. And they say that you are so hardworking daw. Uh, Nahirapan daw sumunod yung mga tao mo sa'yo, uh, Secretary. Ganun ba? Okay, so before the break, we were discussing about, you said that uh, more incentives, di ba? Yes, yes. And then, of course, mm -hmm. I asked also um, what will be the benefit for the uh -huh. small and medium uh, uh -huh. scale enterprises. So, yeah, so you, can you please elaborate so, yeah. more on the incentives and the uh, benefits? The benefits. So, the incentives, I was... Uh, Describing earlier that the ITH will be enhanced, mm -hmm. taking into consideration the location outside Metro Manila and sure. urban advanced urban cities, as well as uh, if you are into technology, 
oriented uh, operation. Right. And then after the ITH, it graduates into a lower income tax rate. But mm -hmm. the way it, the lower income tax rate uh, will be computed, uh, there will be more deductions that will be allowed. So this is these are the enhancements I, I was mm -hmm. referring to right. so, earlier. I mean, this would mm -hmm. uh, definitely address the fears oh, oh. Uh, of uh, the stakeholders, the right? Correct. And we oh. want really to propagate this information that uh, the, 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 the incentives actually are, will be enhanced. And for instance, mm -hmm. before uh, uh, we are used to having like uh, uh, extra deductibility like uh, additional deduction on R&D and, and uh, ex training expenses. Right. Now, uh, this, this bill will have uh, basically 200% deduction on your R&D and training expenses mm -hmm. as well as uh, additional 50%, so 150% deduction if you employ, you know, the direct labor, the number of right, direct yes. labor you acquired, yes. the uh, domestic content, yes. the, the domestic inputs. That so you'll you have a formula that, uh, for that uh, one, yeah. If you construct an infrastructure uh, around your operation. Uh, so there are, and in fact, we, are, we have suggested, we are contemplating also on giving extra deduction for uh, to to basically offset the higher cost of power because it's all often mentioned, yes. especially for certain industries that Absolutely. one this one disincentive is the cost of power, especially right. the power intensive uh, industries. Correct. So we're thinking of putting some kind of an offsetting mechanism, mm -hmm. more deductibility on the difference on uh, in terms of the power rates mm -hmm. and, and and many more that we're where you know that we are we would like to add in the in the revision right. of the the tax reform um so in, in other words there'll be an enhancement on the deduction so that the the tax due will be lower and of course sure. and then you apply now the lower income tax rate uh that will that will run after the ith the income right. tax holiday yes uh so this definitely will enhance the uh, the the bill and uh, mm -hmm. enhance the incentive system for our country right okay so um how will the Citira bill affect the labor sector because i mm -hmm. think you touched mm -hmm. uh, on it briefly Mm -hmm. They were saying that uh, some of the fears, because yes. right now these are just fears, concerns, correct, right? Correct. So um, if and when, uh, if ever it happens, na, that there will be some companies that will choose to fold and uh, mm -hmm. go another place. So def definitely, uh, to minimize that uh, potential risk of labor disruption, mm -hmm. uh, we that's the reason why we were proposing for a transition period right. that's longer, so that companies can can hopefully be given more time to adjust their operation. And what for those and that uh, decide um, to let just fold and pack we, up? We believe that that will not be too much because with these uh, adjustments we are trying to put into the uh, bill, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully there will be any drastic impact uh, right. as to the profitability of these operations. Right. So transition period is very important and also classifying companies that are really low, low margin, uh, high export oriented, labor mm -hmm. intensive. Uh, oh, so we will be right. focusing on this. Yes, and also, Secretary, I believe that uh, your your goal is really to uh, help attract more foreign investors yes, here, right? Yes, yes. So this is also what the bill seeks to uh, to yeah to to get right. And then that's so, the reason why, Congressman, we are trying. We want the bill to be passed as soon as possible, right? Because the reason why foreign investments are quite affected right now. Mm -hmm. It's not because we, uh, the, because of the provisions of this tax reform, mm -hmm. uh, but it's really because of the uncertainty. And since this reform has not yet been passed, and they are not aware of the provisions, what will be the tax regime? So that is where the concern or uncertainty is coming from. Yes. It's the uncertainty because it's not yet passed. But once it's passed, right. we believe that you know the since with the incentives uh, and the structure, the features are set mm -hmm. in place. There'll be more confidence now in this new enhanced uh, incentive scheme, which right. I must say, the reason why we are ad adding yes. those uh, additional deduction and all that, this is these are the provisions that will uh, influence the behavior of the company. So if That's you give incentives right. to. Uh, hiring more labor so that mm -hmm. to address the concern of the labor sector, then you add more deductibility there. Then, of course, if they hire more labor, it will benefit the yes, people. Absolutely. So you you change the behavior into 
hiring more and also using domestic uh, inputs mm -hmm. because there's more deduction to that. That's right. uh, so that's a more these 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 provisions and tax deductibility are put there precisely to change the behavior of the company mm -hmm. rather than a general uh, lower income tax rate just given right. to everyone. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, the bill uh, yes. in the Senate. Okay, so you have hurdled the lower house. Yes. So you are now at the Senate. But uh, I, has it been filed? or um, And what's your goal? Uh, as, as of what's your wish, uh, As of <laughs> today, Kong, uh, I'm not aware that it has been filed. Yes. So we, uh, we, but we expect that soon. Soon, uh, yes. Because uh, I think there's an agreement with, uh, at least we, among the economic managers and together with the Senate leadership that the, the CITIRA is one bill that they will, uh, you know, uh, facilitate. They yes. Will, uh, they consider urgent. It's and certified urgent right, also. It by is. The yes, it's it's a priority measure so after all. It's a priority all, measure. Right? And in answer po to your uh, question earlier, why is it a priority? Because it benefits mostly yeah, the, the MSMEs. Yeah, yeah MSMEs. Uh, so can you explain a little bit further so that especially those, because when you talk about the uh, micro, small, uh, and medium enterprises, not all of them would understand uh, uh -huh. the uh, the salient points that the bill provides. Uh -huh. uh, so it's very simple. Lang po. First, uh, since many of the SMEs are not registered for you know incentive availment, yes, they will definitely benefit uh, even without registration by the lowering of this thirty percent to twenty percent. Twenty percent, yes, uh, of corporate right. income tax. Right. So, uh, so that that would be the the main benefit to them. Mm -hmm. Of course, if they SMEs are welcome to register with BOI and other agencies, uh, if, especially if they're export-oriented, SAPESA, mm -hmm. so they can also get these other incentives. So mm -hmm. the, uh, the the ITH and the lower tax rate that, uh, after the ITH, they, they will get the benefit uh, from these incentives. I but see. again, just to remind everyone that everybody, big or small companies, mm -hmm. we will move towards a, a regime wherein it's a time-bound set of incentives, but it right. will be performance-based and uh, better incentives will be given to the high-performing uh, Absolutely. Uh, I, I, think that's, uh, I think that's just fair, right? Yes. So, um, Secretary, uh, I know that you're looking at 2021 mm -hmm. where you want to start implementing the bill already, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, uh, do you think you'll be able to reach that goal? Uh, yes, we are in fact hoping, Kong, that uh, at the Senate and, and the BICAM after we mm -hmm. hope to have the bill passed within the first quarter, actually. Within so, the first quarter, but we're already uh, yeah. February now, oh, nga. Secretary. So, so. Lang yan, wishful thinking. Oh, oh wishful. Uh, at oh, the pwede latest, naman. At libre the latest, naman mag-wish, uh, no? Libre naman. Oh. At, at the, at, of course, at the latest second quarter. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, but um, you don't expect, um, well, you expect smooth sailing uh, in, in the Senate. We uh, expect smooth sailing because I think there is convergence of views already. Right. Uh, uh, and by many stakeholders and even those that will be affected at the PESA. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, if you ask them, they want grandfathering, meaning continuation of, course, of their benefit. Yes, but of course. the reality is uh, we're doing a reform already. Yes. And that is the purpose mm -hmm. really is to, to overhaul the system. And at any rate, what we committed to them uh -huh. is we will address their concerns uh, in, the, in the capping of incentives by prolonging or extending the, the transition period. So, uh, doon na lang, well, yun least, na lang ang yun ang pinag natin. Oo, yun ang pinag-uusapan uh -oh, nyo ngayon. Yeah. And then, you're looking at hopefully yung uh -oh. seven years. Uh, and, that, for, and, and with seven years, I'm sure they, they should be able to adapt already uh -oh, to, so that, that's, you know, that's their actually a long time. To more, uh -oh, uh -oh, that's to a long time. Productive. Right. Okay, so Secretary, I know that uh, you have so many concerns uh, under mm -hmm. the DTI. So, obviously, Sitira is just uh, one mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. You still have a lot. Now, we have uh, the... Uh, uh, NCOV uh, uh, or the, the novel, corona novel coronavirus, coronavirus, right? And uh, obviously, this is something that affects the trade industry, right? Yeah. So, um, we'll ask you that more about that topic after this break. Please stay with us. Mga isyung pinag-uusapan Mga palitang laman ng pahayagan Informasyong dapat yung malaman Tatalakayin Pupusisiin Ihimayin ni Mario Garcia kasama ang kanyang mga panauhin sa harap ng bayan. Face off! 
Good evening and welcome back to our episode of Congress Diaries. And our guest for tonight is still DTI Secretary Ramon Mon Lopez. So Secretary Mon, ito pa, uh, mm. affecting our uh, trade uh, mm. right now. This uh, deadly virus, sabi mm. nga nila, in our headline today, it's deadlier daw than SARS. But I don't know if uh, that's true. But what is the impact of this and how do we mitigate this? And also, nagkaroon pa ng ano, hindi ba? Yung sa hoarding ng Facebook. Masks. So, tell me, uh, yung macro and then micro Sige. and what you're doing about so, it. So, yung macro muna. Of course, mm. the, the immediate impact will be the in the movement of people. Kasi yes. everybody's advised to hopefully have some home quarantine or less movement, especially if you are sick or if you're coming, especially from Wuhan, China. Yes. And Not even, so, sir. So, so even, even here, around, no? no. So, ibig sabihin lang the tourism. When yes. I say movement of people, yung movement ng, of course, the tourist sector, tourism so sector, are... will be greatly affected. Especially, yes. uh, if you think about it, the the, the second uh, source country ng tourist mm -hmm. would be China. Right. Um, in fact, baka eventually, maunahan niya na yung Korea as number one. Mm -hmm. But China is the second uh, source, I think 1.5 to 1.8. Of our tourists, of tourists uh, that are coming, coming into China. the... Yes. And there's a lockdown mm -hmm. uh, in China. Yes. Uh, the, the, so definitely zero tourists or very minimal tourists now mm -hmm. uh, coming from China. And uh, but we just hope that this will be very, very temporary, like short uh, yes. periods of time. But there's um, also a domino effect, uh, uh, Secretary, eh? mm -hmm. because when you have fewer tourists, the hotels will oh, also nga, be affected. That's true. The restaurants Marami will be ma affected. Oh, so oh. the tourism, so when we say tourism, that really includes the, there's a, sorry, contribution to the value, gross value yes. added, the GVA, right. the economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are estimates uh, put out by NEDA, uh, mm -hmm. I just don't remember any more the number, parang yes. 0 0.3, 0 0.03 percent if mm -hmm. it stays for one month. Mm -hmm. If the uh, but, uh, because hopefully we this virus will not uh, you know last. stay for many more. Yeah. Will yes, not last. Yes. Will not stay for many more months. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one month, so I mean three months. So we simply uh, would expect a a minimal impact on less than six months. Right. But uh, of course, it, we are talking, and hopefully within six months there would be solution. Um, yes, they were already. they were saying that uh, uh, the virus does not yeah. uh, survive in an, an env environment in, na mainit, right? Especially in our environment, oh. high humidity and oh. warm. Yes. At, and and also so far the mortality rate is two percent, unlike the previous. But two percent is very high already, Secretary. Yung dati po kasi mga thirty plus percent. Eh. Which one? Uh, Oh, yung, I think mm. there's one uh, H1N1 and ah, I think, H1N1, uh, yes, yes, I forgot that's the other correct. one. M yung Merskov, Mer 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 oh, oh, yes, so may mga right. higher uh, right, right. mortality rate. So you think that uh, people well, panic so more? So dapat hindi masyado magpanic. <laughs> oh, nga. So may impact sa tourism. Mm -hmm. On the trade, we expect also a bit of impact because uh, yes. of the supply chain. We're all connected. Eh? So yes, absolutely. Many of our like uh, auto parts or parts of appliances that are uh, constructed or manufactured in the country, some mm -hmm. parts are coming from Wuhan yes. or oh. and on other parts of China. Oh so, okay. uh, kung nakashut down doon, there will be, of course, impact to the, oh, the, the supply chain. Yes. And so, our companies here will have to source from other countries mm -hmm. first. Uh, so that's the immediate impact. Uh, there, there would be a slowdown on that part of mm -hmm. the business. Uh, so trading as well as uh, uh, our uh, our exports as well. Right. So um, those, but on the food export, the industrial products might be yes. affected. There might be a slowdown. But on the food exports, we believe because the people will still eat, and uh, so the, yes. we believe that the food export will continue. Uh, mm -hmm. There might just be a, a much slower pace and movement. Especially even last night and this more uh, well yesterday morning, yeah. there were some confusion as to pagbinando kasi yung from China. The, there was a well a, a memo out there from the Bureau of Quarantine. Uh, binanden pati movement ng ships ah, and the uh, ships okay. the containing right, right. the the containers the goods. Right. No, so yes. ayaw ipa bird sa Dito sa, sa ports yes. natin. Right. So yes. na correct naman ka agad yon in a few hours. Na pa reverse na man yon. Uh, mm -hmm. We talked to the Secretary of Health, yes. as, as well as, uh, of course, with the ES mm -hmm. and other secretaries, Secretary Dominguez, Sinapabanandon, si oh, oh, Secretary Togade, oh, oh, the PPA, so yes. that 
uh, definitely we should not uh, halt on the trade side. Yes. Because the containers, naman, they don't have virus, no? Then they don't they don't right. cough. Right. Sabi yeah. na namin. Oh, hindi naman tao. Oh, hindi naman tao yon. Hindi they, naman siya nabubuhay. If they, they, they are, you know, if they doubt, they just spray on it. But pag nainita naman yung container, which yes. is normally the case, right. na mamatay naman yung virus, so it should not be an issue. So na correct naman po yon. Well, so the in terms of the like the ships coming in, mm -hmm. ang hindi nalang lalabas, especially coming from China, uh, those coming from China, ang hindi nalang lalabas yung tao, kasi nga naka parang naka ban mo na ang movement ng tao. Sabi nga nila galing sa livestock din daw or galing din or, sa animals yung mga ano. Yeah, so what oh, do you think? Pero ito naman mga containers naman ito. I so see. the containers should just continue to be brought right, out. Right, and, right, right. So, so the trade, in other words, the trading should continue and oh. the movement of goods. Yung tao can stay on the ship muna. Yes. Uh, so, and then, <laughs> more, protective, oh, yeah. more protective devices used by the people sa, sa ground. Mm -hmm. Siguro wearing of gloves, masks. Okay, so, Secretary, um, we are, since you mentioned about the masks, no? Eh, di ba, yung hoarding, naririnig natin na ganyan, and uh, the panic buying of masks and the shortage of masks, mm, di ba? Uh, uh. So, nakakatakot din yun. So, but you said... Uh, Hindi naman na uh, ganito Hindi yung naman case. Hindi naman hoarding. Oo, oh, oh, sige nga. Kasi a, a normal situation, I mean, wala namang may bilin ng mask. Even oh. that before the Taal eruption, uh, siguro mabilang mo lang yung bumibili ng mask. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, mga drugstores, they don't keep high inventory of this. And, right. And then, all of a sudden, nag-umpisa ng Taal eruption, mm -hmm. biglang dumagsad, ng surge in demand on oh, the mask. So, itong mga drugstores, of course, will reorder. Nag-reorder yes. sila, May dumating, ang bilis na naman na ubo. Oh. So, then, so maybe they realized they I have underestimated the demand because mm -hmm. lalo na nung... Actually, double whammy tayo, Secretary, because we have the Taal. Uh -huh. uh, and then shortly after uh -huh. that, and nagkaroon oh, tayo ng Encove. Just to yeah. cite you an example, in, during the Taal volcano ko, mm -hmm. um, yung nakausap na natin, nakausap ko kasi yung... Uh, the uh, loan exporter, manufacturer, mm -hmm. based in Bataan, ng mm -hmm. mga mas. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, we thank them because they donated mga 500,000 mas oh, wow. during the Taal eruption yes. uh, period. You know, after they donated, they, they were telling me, uh, since biglang na-solve, hindi naman na-solve, uh, medyo nag-die down na, actually. Nag -die down oh, ng ito ng Taal, oh. tumahimik din yung Taal, yes. nagbalikan yung mga tao. Right. Sabi nila, biglang walang demanda naman. No. So, ganun ka, ano nga, wala that, talaga bumibili. That's, that's so, true. Yes, yeah. And then, a few days after, NCOV erupted. Oh, so, umutok pani, naman yung coronavirus. Oh, so, panibagong oh. eruption naman yan. So, with that, biglang sudden demand naman. So, that just shows na uh, hindi talaga commonly used yung mask. Right. Now, having said that, anyway, the, so these drugstores... No, but they were saying, Secretary, that because of that, because of the shortage of the mask, ang ginagawa ng mga tao, they price it so high. Oo. So, Oo. syempre, may ano rin yan, supply and demand. But since we are monitoring the price right yes. now, especially on the, the first uh, few weeks ng uh, the NCOV, uh, we have put out a price naman na 1 peso to yes, 8 peso uh, range. So, may SRP na Oo, So, paglagpas ng 8 pesos, doon naman nagko DTI. Every day ang monitoring DTI mm -hmm. ah, and, mm -hmm. and everywhere. And uh, may nahulihan na kami na yun nga, ng mga violate about 18 of them and they mm -hmm. were charged already. Right. And they, they will be penalized up to 300,000 pesos. Right. Uh, but since continuing to search in demand, even the, we, we were told that the mga, mga Mercury, Watson, and Dra, mm -hmm. what's the other one, uh, South Star, the big yes. ones, uh, even sila nahirapan na ring mag-source. Mag uh, mag order sila, may mga parating daw sila, pero na we withheld Wala din saan. Oh. Kasi may, kailangan oh, din daw misan okay. doon sa country na yon. Uh -huh. So like Mercury, we, we heard may 5 million order sila. 5 million na. That's Then so, sila oh, that's order ng ganyan na yes, yes. kadaming mass. No? Hmm. So, uh, last late last week, uh, after the observing this, kasi ang mass is medical device yan eh, under mm -hmm. DOH yan. So, mm -hmm. sin hindi yan under DTI. But Correct. since we were seeing some of the shortages uh, observing what's happening, we offered our services na nag-initiate kami. Mm -hmm. Sabi namin si DOH, we'll help you source the mass. 
Right. And uh, nagtanong-tanong kami, we asked about six countries. Would you believe, many of them actually said that they are also in shortage. And so, you have the same problem. So, parang same problem. Oh, and same uh, problem. sabi nila, wala rin silang may susupply. I see. So, but there is this one country, Thailand, uh, we found out a couple of days ago, about two days ago, na okay, may supply daw meron sila. Meron silang supply. So, meron so, supply sila. Hopefully, so, they hopefully, will be coming oh, in. Oh, refer namin sa mga drugstores doon. But the, the good news actually is our only supplier manufacturer here, here in the Philippines based in Bataan, is exporter yan, Taiwanese company, has been here for 41 years. So uh -huh. they love the Philippines and yes. sila yung nag-donate ng 500,000 right, right, sa Bata right. Batangas. Mm -hmm. uh, sinabi nila na, okay, in their production moving mm -hmm. forward, they will commit 100,000 this week, so which mm -hmm. they delivered to the DTI oh, they did. yesterday. They Kaya already ipapakalat did. Namin yun. I see. And then they will commit uh, 400,000 pieces per week based on the capacity that they have. So okay. wow, in, that's in, good. in a month, so, mga 2 million. So that means uh, uh, that will hopefully address uh, uh, this hopefully, problem uh, um, once and for all. And uh, of course, we are hoping that the NCOV uh, uh, virus uh, will, not will, last, uh, uh, will not last. Okay, so Secretary, let's move on to your other industries, you know, let's say. Actually, I read that uh, you mentioned that uh, our the BOI approved uh, investments okay. nag 1 trillion ng yes, 2019, so, hindi ba? So, Will that be affected because of these factors that came in? Also, how are you looking at the manufacturing sector? But again, Secretary, mm -hmm. bibigyan kita ng chance na makarecover ng contest. So, <laughs> uh, our uh, episode for Congress Diaries will be back after this break. Stay with us. The Philippines has been around for centuries. Malayo na rin ang narating natin. But back then, the way of life has been mostly analog. Did you know that you need to take a boat from Cavite in order to go to Manila? Yes, ganon ang takbo ng buhay dati. You need to send a letter to the United States? Sure, pero aabutin ka ng isang buwan bago matanggap ang iyong liham. Kailangan mong tumawag sa bahay o sa iyong kaibigan? Many ways to do that. Pwede ka maghulog ng tatlong 25 sa payphone, or use that vintage rotary phone na most likely, six digits lang ang landline number. Forget about email. Telex at fax machine ang modes of communication for business. You want to listen to that one song of your favorite band on repeat? Sorry, pero kailangan mong i-rewind ang cassette tape. Buong album naman ang kailangan mong bilhin, kahit iisang kanta lang ang gusto mo doon. But things change, and we as a race progress. The world is getting small. We are now a traveling population. Why? Because travel is now cheap. Our friends are across the world because our form of communication is now borderless. Time zones are now meant to serve as a guide and not as a limitation. We can buy things from the comfort of our homes. Nasanay na tayo sa convenience because why not? It is the price of development and the glimpse of our future. Have you imagined the future? How do you think it will look like? Driverless cars? Yes, autonomous driving will happen. Robots replacing low-value processes done by humans? Tama ka dyan. Paying for your groceries using digital currency? Very realistic. Materials being 3D printed instead of ordering? Yes, we are indeed a progressive race. And technology plays a vital and crucial part of it. How will this affect our lives? Kailangan ba natin itong matutunan? Mahirap ba itong aralin? Or kaya naman? How can our nation take advantage of these advancements? All of these can be understood and learned. Tayo ng matuto para umunlad. Nandito na ang Abante. Progress through technology. Good evening and welcome back to Congress Diaries. So, uh, Secretary Lopez, uh, we are now here uh, on uh, the last stretch of our episode. Um, I, I told you, um, we, I've read very good, encouraging news mm -hmm. about the BOI-approved uh, investments that yes. uh, are now about $1 trillion oh, in so 2019. Is that right? Did we hit that? Yes, it's It's a record level, $1.14 uh, trillion pesos. It's so the first yes. time it hit the trillion mark. Yes. Uh, in the past two years, uh, 52 years na kasi ang BOI, so... Mm -hmm. Yung 50th year, we 
or the 51st year we hit a, a record level at that yes. time 617 billion mm, pesos okay. and then in 2018 that's 2017 in 2018 18, naman yes. we hit also another record level of about 900 15 billion Laki pesos. Ng jump, huh? 2019, oh. 1.1. Mm-hmm. Tapos kaya nga, talon siya ng talon and yes. shows talaga the, the, the confidence in the Duterte mm-hmm. administration right. and all the reforms we're trying to do. Yes. And many of these are outside Metro Manila investments. Right. Huh? I was going to oh, ask, oh. Uh, when you say um, all these approved investments, uh, which uh, industries or sectors so do they belong to? Sa industries naman, they belong to manufacturing. Uh, oh, that's good. Good energy, news for the manufacturing. Correct. Energy yes. power. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, yes. ITBPM, I think, is there, and also uh, real estate, mga mga right. industrial estates, and right. uh, so kasama rin yon. Oh, oh. And then outside Metro Manila, about 80 to 85 percent oh, outside okay. Metro Manila. That, na. That's good. Dati, MC Arang Malaki, no? Oh, okay. So that, that that these are good indications. Now. BOI is a pledge, and uh, they register for in- incentive availment. Yes. Uh, of course. So the so makakaffect by the Citira mo jan. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, the Citira can even just enhance this in moving forward. Okay. So these are they, those who registered now will is under the current regime basically. I see. The yes. Yes. Current correct. Set of incentives. Yeah, the current setup that uh, we have. Yes. Uh, uh, so. The benefit din sila, especially for the new investors na yon yung Citira. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know nga, but so these are pledges. So we expect the incent, the investments to really come mm-hmm. in, the actual uh, implementation mm-hmm. in one year, within one to two year time. Right, right. Uh, so Which is really the remaining na, years of the Duterte uh, administration. W- uh, when they registered, they basically are finished with their feasibility studies. They right. have a location yes. already. Uh, right. So in the works na. Ang kulang mm-hmm. na lang mag pasok na ng pera at mag-import na ng mga mm-hmm. equipment. So, yun mm-hmm. na yung next steps yan. Right. Okay. So, um, that's uh, very encouraging. Oh, yes. So, oh. uh, especially, as you say, um, even the manufacturing sector kasi may slowdown yata oh, oh. sa uh, manufacturing sector. Affected yung manufacturing sector recently uh, yes. because of the slowdown abroad because of the U.S.-China trade war. Many things happening. Yes, and, that's correct. And even even some investors coming you know, from abroad medyo may slowdown din yung FDIs mm-hmm. in general. Right. Uh, so manufacturing is uh, re- uh, quite affected, uh, but however, even DTI recognizing that we have proposed some marketing, uh, mar- uh, manufacturing uh, revitalization uh, well, okay. efforts. Uh, we want to support more industries. Uh, we're planning for a, a some kind of a non-tax incentive system for them uh, mm-hmm. support, so that it can you know uh, upgrade, level up the manufacturing industries and really improve their their GVA their mm-hmm. their growth uh, performance right okay um secretary among all the others that are you know booming right now you know even e vehicle investments yes, is yes. that also a substantial um part uh, will they play a major role yeah. in the future for in the future yes uh, the current investments are many minimal pa lang sa e vehicle right now yes uh, but definitely with the set of incentives also that will come out As we discuss this e-vehicle, there's an e-vehicle bill uh, mm-hmm. being uh, discussed also now at the House mm-hmm. under uh, the Chair of Trade and Industry, Congressman Chair Wes Gatchalian. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, uh, the, so sets of incentives will be uh, mapped out for this uh, e-vehicle. Mm-hmm. That's one sector uh, that the Philippines will have a chance in, in growing because yes. on the, uh, the regular vehicle, Um, marami na, the other countries grew faster. Eh. Oh, oh, uh, eh, we eh, have eh. a limited assembly uh, yeah, production that, that's activities That's correct. Here. And uh, we even saw uh, that, you know, a uh, plant was uh, transferred to oh, another oh, country. Correct. That's so, why um, we, that's why the, the DTI came up also with the program about three years ago on mm-hmm. this CARS program, the uh, CARS as in Comprehensive Auto Resurgence Strategy, wherein uh, certain support is given to The car maker. Ah, the car Two makers. car makers. Oh, oh, para in an effort to bring back oh, uh, uh, again uh, interest. Oh, oh so the assembly they're oh. doing. We're now doing here the Toyota Vios, the Mitsubishi mm-hmm. Mirage. Mm-hmm. So dito na sa Pilipinas lang ah, ginagawa. Okay, and, that's good news. And I think yes. one recent news that I heard from Mitsubishi, the chairman of Mitsubishi, mm-hmm. Masuko San, uh, came over uh, about a few weeks ago. He mentioned that. 
for Mitsubishi, they will make Philippines a an, an export hub, a production a hub. hub. Wow. Na pag oh, dito yes. minam manufacture a, yes. a specific model, ito na yung magiging source nila to export to for, for like, the Asian to market. The world. Oh, for oh. the Asian market. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So, so, never pang na, ano yun, nagawa yan. But, they have good plans, so I want to meet them soon again to map out the oh, 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 specifics. Oh, oh, tama. Simula na natin, ano? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, finally, one of your uh, star industries, yung construction. Oh, okay. Hindi ba? Eh, kasi because this is in line with the build, build, build oh, of yes. uh, uh, the, the president, right? So, um, what are you looking at here uh, in this industry? Obviously, construction grew leaps and bounds, especially uh, oh, yes. in the past uh -huh. few years. Because so, of the, uh, yeah, because of the build, 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 uh, and uh, again, uh, confidence on the current uh, mm -hmm. administration's efforts in uh, the economy, the uh, construction industry has been growing double digit. Right. Oh, so that is single or negative, pa, but now it's uh, registering about 16%. Wow, that's high. Huh? Yeah, double digits. Uh, and um, the well, last year, that the last two quarters after the budget was passed, uh, nag double digit na siya. And of course, moving forward, that's what we expect. Mm -hmm. uh, much of this, of course, would be coming from the rapid, uh, aggressive infrastructure development program of government. Mm -hmm. which is now spending over 5% of GDP on wow. infrastructure. And uh -huh. in fact, I saw a presentation yesterday na compared to previous administration, ngayong, ngayong Duterte administration, I think three times, uh, no, 20 times more yata yung pag-increase ng, uh, ng uh, infrastructure infra spending. Infrastructure, yes. Uh -oh. So right. malaki yung, mga, yung growth talaga ngayon ng infrastructure, even mm -hmm. the number of projects. And, then, and that's the reason why it's helping also create more jobs. I think oh, yes, out of the yes. one point, over 1.2 million new jobs created in 2019, close to 300,000 are in the construction industry. Right now? Yes, oh, oh, di yes. Nga, di, there was yes. uh, recently one of the uh, problems in the industry was that there was a shortage oh, oh, of workers. Oh, there's a shortage. So, eh. yung mga construction firms daw, they go offer pa ng mas mataas para... Uh, pumasok ka lang sa Monday, siguro. Oh, nga. <laughs> sa, sa, inyo, sa inyo project. Kasi nasusulot eh. Oh, They're okay. being, pir being pirated by other projects eh. So oh. that's good for the, the people, the, our workers. And of course, there's more demand for skilled uh, workers. Oh, and, yes, yes. Uh, oh, and uh, more training, technology transfer also as there are foreign construction firms coming in, especially the quadruple A, mm -hmm. as we call it. So big, big firms coming in for yeah, technology there are, transfer. I think there are seven or eight uh, quadruples. Uh, quadruple, you're very right? familiar. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> okay, so um, wrapping it all up now, you have what two years left yeah, uh, yes, in yes. your in the term um, in the yes. Duterte term, right? So what is your goal personally, uh, Secretary? Well, um, what mm. do you want to see happen? Um, you know, before you step down. Well, um, well, first of all, we want to see. Poverty incidents really go down. At the end of the day, we want to see our kababayans, mm -hmm. wala nang mahirap, mas marami talagang uh, uh, above that's, poverty. That's really our, everyone's oh, wish. Talagang, talaga. uh, and oh. with that, ang contribute natin is creating more jobs, trabaho, mm -hmm. negosyo, at saka consumer protection. Yan yung mantra ng DTI. Eh. Trabaho, trabaho negosyo, negosyo, consumer protection. Trabaho, yes. giving jobs, more investments giving jobs to our people. Kasi for every job we provide, we leave one from poverty. That's correct. So, trabaho lang yan, mabigyan yan. Pag walang trabaho, mabigyan ng negosyo, SME. Yes. So, tinutulo natin SME. And the SMEs naman, we are now even, of course, nationwide po ang efforts ng DTI dyan. Over 1,000 100 uh, negotiation centers, DTI mm -hmm. negotiation centers. Right, and that's your advocacy. Yan po yung tinutulak talaga <laughs> yes. ever since, kahit wala pa ako ng government. Yes. Helping the SMEs really become smarter and they mm -hmm. upgrade, they level up. They become the future medium and large companies mm -hmm. uh, para magagaling sila, matalino, may pera, so pinapautang sila. Pin Correct. Uh, product development. You, you giving, help them. Giving them equipment, giving them the market where to sell. So, we we have a, a, a program there mm -hmm. and of course and the consumer, consumer protection, protection oh, oh. Yes, our secretary we're, kailangan natin palakasin, palakasin yan. Yan. Oh, so may oh, price eh. like yung nangyari sa mask may mga nahuli tayo but pa, ano pa yan and also the basic necessity price right, quality right. or price and pangalawang importante rin standards sa yes, consumer protection to make right. sure yung safety ng ating kababayan in the Philippine, you know, the products mm -hmm. uh, that we have uh, are quality and uh, compliant to standard. So, hopefully, so before we leave, hopefully we can 
I mean, we leave the administration. Uh, we uh, would be able to help on poverty and jobs. Uh, and also, uh, the, more on the DTI part also, aside from job prov provision, yung manufacturing industry would be you revived. You want to revitalize Oo, the industry. Oo, kasi dati yan, mga nasa 6 to 5 percent. Oo, eh, bumaan, so many bumaan. problems out there. So, ang, ang dami mong wish list, ah, and, uh, secretary. Eh. Oo, uh, so, lahat yan gusto mo, ha? Gusto na yan. Gusto oh, na yan, yan. That, Of course, the SME growth. No? That, that's true. Okay, so we wish you well uh, in uh, in that regard. <laughs> yes. And uh, I hope that uh, you get your goals. Diba? Parang sabi nga nila, bucket list. Eh, ikaw naman, yeah, yeah, yeah. those are your goals uh, yes, at yes. the end of your Before term, leave, right? Maraming so, SME, so fully 2 million, over 2 million na coming from 1.5, wow, coming from oh. 900,000 3 years ago. So ngayon, oh, madob, more than double na. So that's what uh, you want to see more. Yes, so yes. for inclusive growth, oh, oh, correct? For inclusive growth. Okay, so maraming maraming salamat. Thank, Thank you, you very po. much, uh, Secretary. Uh, and Pong. yes, and that is uh, our episode for Congress Diaries this evening. We will be back next week to take another look at pending bills in Congress and see if these proposed laws deserve to become real laws. And in the meantime, I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin, saying see you next week. <music>